what's your relationship with um, BBC Now Orchestra? Do you have to pick a very specialist orchestra or any orchestras, BBC or other orchestras could play Franz Schmidt? Have you got a relationship with, with uh, the BBC Now Orchestra? Yeah, so I, I actually have a very long relationship with the BBC Now. I've been going there for over 10 years now. Okay. Um, I started off as an assistant. My teacher was their principal guest, conductor Jacques Van Steen. And I went there really as part of my studies as a 20-year-old, as a 21-year-old. Um, and I helped him with his rehearsals and I listened and I got to know the orchestra. Um, I went actually even before the Hodenot Hall was built and they had a studio um, in Klandauf in sort of North Cardiff. Um And we used to go there and Jacques would take programs and I'd rehearse um, or I'd listen to his rehearsals and learn a lot. Um, and then that went on for some years. Then they moved to Hoddenot Hall and Jacques was there and we were there at the, the opening of that hall. Then um, a colleague, a friend of mine actually very sadly fell ill and uh, couldn't do a concert six, seven years ago. Um, and they called me in completely last minute Uh, a really tough program of new music, um, a sweep from Ryan Wigglesworth's opera, um, a piece of Alexander Gers, um, and a huge oboe concerto by John Woolrich. Uh, and it went really, really well. And then we started to form this relationship uh, with me as the conductor. And I did a bunch of things, some concerts, some recording sessions for the BBC. And so when I was, when I was putting this project together and thinking about which which orchestra I wanted to do this project with, the BBC really sort of came out forefront because I knew them very well. Um, I loved the time that they had. They're very, they're a very focused orchestra. They're incredible when the red light comes on. I mean, this sort of, these antennae come up and they play really in a very focused way and they really They want to get everything perfect and brilliant. The red light made me made me feel anxious, anxious because I felt like when obviously in Cardiff, um, when it went on, um, you can't do anything, you can't move. No, it's. And I mean, it's terrifying. The red light for those who who don't know, I'm sure you do from uh, studios, is in the middle of the orchestra and on both the walls whenever the record button is pressed, these big red lights come on. And you know that these microphones are picking up every single sound. I mean, even breath or rustling of clothes or you move your feet on the ground, you turn a page, pick them up. So there's this, I suppose it's a tension, but even more it's a focus that comes down when the right red light goes on, much more than a concert even. Because in a concert, there's a flow and you've got all of this ritual of warming up, of putting your concert clothes on, coming out onto stage, tuning up, sitting down, lights go down, and then you start to play. In a recording session, you have to find that extreme level of hearing, of sensitivity, of playing, of relaxation as well. And you find it for anything from two minutes to 50 minutes. And then the red light goes off and you talk and you do things again and it comes back on and immediately you've got to be there again. So it's a real, it's a real craft. And the BBC Welsh are in, an incredible recording orchestra. Radio orchestras, so orchestras that play for the radio often. So the BBC orchestras or in Germany, the Rundfunk orchestras or uh, in Paris, the radio orchestra, they, they, they're all around the world. They're in Vienna as well, the Vienna radio orchestra. They sort of train this approach to playing with a red light and performing and knowing how to take risks as well. Because it's, if you want to play perfectly, that's one thing. You play safely, but that's not making music. That's not bringing it to life. So you have to take risks. And that was that sort of training and craftsmanship of recording. Also some of the personas, they've got phenomenal wind players in Cardiff. They've got a great bass section and they've got the Hoddenot Hall um, and wonderful strings. They're two leaders. Um, we have two different leaders um, for the violins, the violas, the cellos and the basses are all beautiful players. So 
I really knew that we had a team that would really commit and um, almost, I, I hope, relish the opportunity of really getting into an unknown composer's music 